I'm Brad Carlson with the University of Minnesota Extension and welcome to part two in our series on selecting a used farm tractor. In part one we talked about some of the major considerations you need to make before you begin your search. In particular we talked about what you'll be using your tractor for. In this segment we're going to talk about basic tractor configuration. The term row crop tractor means that the tractor was designed to be able to drive through a growing crop. To accommodate this, row crop tractors have adjustable wheel widths and typically have a higher clearance off the ground so that they won't disturb crops that they are driving through. Older farm tractors that you might consider purchasing may have a narrow front end. This was done to accommodate mounted implements like corn pickers or front mounted cultivators. These implements are largely a thing of the past and it is unlikely that you will ever want to use them so it is unlikely that you will ever need a narrow front end. Nevertheless, there are so many tractors out there with narrow front ends it is quite possible that you may consider purchasing one. The wide front end on a row crop tractor is adjustable. Wide front ends give you better stability and they also have a smaller footprint since both the tires follow the same track. In addition, it provides better weight distribution if you're using your tractor for loader work. The wheel width on a standard tractor is not adjustable. Standard tractors are lower to the ground and therefore are better suited to operate on slopes because they have a lower center of gravity. A standard tractor may be more maneuverable in your yard because they typically have a shorter wheelbase and they could end up being easier for you to store. More recently, the design differences between row crop and standard tractors has become blurred. A modern tractor with front wheel assist may be adjustable to row width only by varying the tire and wheel choices that you have. These days, a newer tractor is less likely to be classified as standard or row crop and more likely to be classified based on its size. And so the terms compact or utility tractor are much more common these days. There is another tractor configuration that you may consider purchasing, and that's industrial. Industrial tractors are less common. They're not designed to work in agricultural settings. Typically, they have stronger and better hydraulics for the types of tasks that they are designed for, specifically loader work. They have a reinforced front end for more weight-bearing capacity when doing loader work, and usually they have more reinforcement in their sheet metal to withstand bumps and abrasions. An industrial tractor may not come with a three-point hitch or a power takeoff, which you may require for the things that you're going to do on your property, so you'll need to do your homework if you consider purchasing one of these. One more thing, they usually come with a premium price. The last group of tractor configurations include those designed for special agricultural situations. These include orchard tractors, high crop tractors, those with a narrow wheelbase, those with a low center of gravity. There are mudders and tractors with creeper gears for extra slow travel. It's not in the scope of this video to go through these, but you may want to check them out depending on your specific circumstance. And remember, if they have special adaptations for special circumstances, typically they're not well adapted for general use. So make sure you do your homework. In our next segment, we're going to talk about a tractor's age and some of the technological advances that have happened through the years. Until then, thanks for watching.